Hey and welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video I wanted to do a speed run using Cyril and Photoshop and I wanted to show you how I reach an end goal in about 15 minutes. I'm going to be using the newest version of Cyril and I will be using scripts to speed up the process. Um, I will share the scripts in the description below on the video. So let's get started and let's see how I can try and make this happen within 15 minutes. So first of all let's make sure that Cyril knows where to find the files. So for this we have a Cyril working directory created and in it it contains three folders darks, flats and lights and we will need to copy the files that we are going to uh, process using Cyril into these folders. So I will stack uh, the object called NGC2359, also known as Thor's helmet. I had a lot of lights on this, but unfortunately only 11 of them were good enough. So let's copy those into the lights folder. The same we do with flats. And last but not least, we need to find the corresponding darks. This is a cooled camera, so I have a calibration library. And these lights, let's see them here, were shot at an exposure length of 120 seconds at gain 120 and a temperature of minus 20 degrees centigrade. So that would be these darks put them here and then we can go into Cyril. Um, let's clear the log of my previous attempts. So we need uh, Cyril to know where to look. Cyril is looking at this working directory that I have set up. If it is not looking at the correct directory you can use this blue button here to set it to the correct location. But we are all set up, so we can just go ahead and start the correct script. NGC2359 is Thor's helmet and this is a HA03 object. So I'm going to use the script that extracts this data and I also use flat, so let's click on this one. And it will start doing its magic. It will extract the HA and the O3. So the end result will be two files, one called HA result and the other O3 result.fit. And those two uh, files I can recombine again into an RGB image. And by doing this, I can make most of my L Extreme filter that I've used because it is. Uh, registering the data of HA and O3 into very uh, specific color channels. And this script is making use of that. So we have now two resulting files. So if I go to the working directory again, I can see that HA result and O3 result file. And in Cyril, in the image processing pull down, I can click on RGB compositing. I will be using the HA data as red, the green will be 03 and blue will also be 03. So this will be an HOO image. I can also use the HA data as luminance. I usually do this um, because I find that it gives me pretty results. The end result is a pretty black image, but that is because it has not been stretched uh, yet. And I can tell Cyril to do an auto stretch so I get a preview. So in the red channel, the HA data, it's pretty grainy. And the other two, green and blue, the O3 data is pretty good. So I can see the RGB preview and that's nice. So. What I can do now then is the photometric color calibration. Uh, one note, this is narrowband data actually because of this L extreme filter. 
So this is not the proper way to do it, but I find that it gives me nice results, so I do it anyway. Um, you have to provide Cyril with the name of an object which is in this field of view. Then you can click one of the results and it will fill in the uh, coordinates. You will also have to provide the focal distance and the pixel size and then it is just a matter of clicking OK and the plate solving algorithm will find the correct orientation and it will also adjust the colors based upon the uh, known colors of the stars within this field of view. So now I have a result. This result is uh, already looking nice. It has been rotated in a way that I don't really like. So I can rotate it back into the way I like. And those of you that were really paying attention can now see that the image is flipped uh, as opposed to what I had before. I also see some black edges on these top and left side of the images and also a bit on the right side. So I'm going to click one of the channels that shows me this in yeah, the best way. And then I can drag an area and click crop. Then I also usually go and run the remove green noise tool. I don't mess with the settings, I just click apply. And I'm going to try and run the background extraction. For this I usually have add diter or dither. I have no idea how to pronounce it. Uh, uh, I have that checked. And I just mess a bit with the tolerance. Click generate and try to find the value where none of the squares are targeting my nebulosity. I can however... Uh, if I click one of the color channels, I can right click those squares that I don't really want messing with my data. This one is also a bit close by. And then I can click apply and it will even out the image. Then I need to finalize this auto stretch. Um, I just click this button here that will apply the auto stretch to the entire image and just click apply close and i will save the result so let's call this result.tiff this is a speed run so for this i'm going to click the 16-bit um, radio button i know that this will not give me the best results but i want a quick result so now we're done in Cyril and uh, let's open this file in Photoshop. In Photoshop there are just a few things that I'd like to do. First of all I'm always making a copy of the layer that I'm working in. And um, let's uh, first camera raw filter and I'm going to mess with the clarity I'm going to up that a bit. It will add some noise but let's get rid of that later. I will also make sure that the vibrance is a bit up and in this case saturation is also nice to, uh, to add. Okay, then I'm going to make a copy of the layer again and now let's get rid of that noise. Uh, for this I don't want to uh, mess too much with the nebulosity so I'm going to uh, make a color range selection. I will put it on highlights. Um, I actually want to target the background. So I'm, I, I can try and drag this a bit so that the, most of the nebulosity will not be hurt by the, um, by the noise reduction. I will make a mask and let's run camera raw filter again. And I'm going to click on this detail tab I will bump up the luminance noise reduction and I will get rid of the detail press ok and now 
the background is a little bit more even. I'll do a select all, I do a copy merge and I will paste this in as a new layer because now I am going to go to the image adjustments levels tool and I will make sure that um, my dark eyedropper is targeting 30 30 30 for the RG and B channel. So you can set that by double clicking this. If you have the black point eyedropper selected and a sample size of a reasonable size, then you can click anywhere in the image that you want to have this uh, 30 30 30 value uh, attached to. And there we go. And this I can save. And let's call this uh, end result. I don't care about the layers in this case. Let's save it. And here we go. We have an end result. And we're done. So that's it. That's a speed run in serial stacking. Uh, making sure that the two colors of HA and O3 are extracted, recombining it, making sure it looks pretty and saving it so you can share it on your favorite social media channels. So if you like this process then uh, yeah, you can use whatever you want but as said this is my process. It is most definitely not the perfect process but it gives me quick results and i wanted to share that with you guys so uh, see you next time and uh, clear skies <laughs>